Welcome to Passing Pathophysiology, Antidiuretic Hormone. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk about antidiuretic hormone, otherwise known as ADH. If you think about the term antidiuretic, so think about what diuretics do. Diuretics increase urination, right? It increases fluid loss through the kidneys. So an antidiuretic would decrease diures diureses, which would then increase our blood volume. Now this ADH is also known as vasopressin. It's released from the pituitary in response to changes in our blood viscosity. So as blood becomes more viscous, we're going to have changes in the levels of our ADH in order to maintain fluid volume. It controls this by controlling water reabsorption in the kidneys. So it's starting out here with the brain, specifically the pituitary, that is an endocrine gland that's up in the brain, and it is going to identify when there's changes occurring to the viscosity of the blood. The pituitary then secretes ADH in response to these changes in blood osmolality, and then the ADH receptors in the renal tubules are stimulated to reduce or increase our sodium excretion and therefore water excretion. Changes in our blood volume are also going to affect blood pressure. Too much ADH, too much anti diuretic hormone. This means this person is not diuresing. That means we have too much water on board. This is also known as the syndrome of inappropriate ADH or syndrome or SIADH. Some of the symptoms associated with too much ADH include nausea, headache, disorientation, lethargy, feeling, and a decrease in our sodium because we're hanging on to too much water. We are diluting the sodium and then that is resulting in a lower sodium level. Too little ADH means we're going to have too little water. Notice how these things are associated with water. And water is the thing that we're really concerned about here because changes in water and changes in osmolality are going to affect the brain. And this is also called diabetes insipidus. Now notice the symptoms, excessive thirst, frequent urination, dehydration, and an increase in our sodium. Let's go back to that first one, excessive thirst. If you have an intact thirst mechanism, you will not end up having diabetes insipidus. Okay, you're going to drink. Now, in this case here, because there's not enough antidiuretic hormone, you're going to be diuresing a lot, right? And so you'll be drinking a lot too at the same time. And that can lead to other problems occurring in the body. But as far as our water balance goes, too little ADH equals too little water. Now, let's compare these two disorders to each other. SIADH versus diabetes insipidus. SIADH, we're going to have a low serum sodium. So when you're taking a look at your patient's labs, you're going to see a low serum sodium, a low serum osmolality, and a high urine osmolality because the urine will be concentrated. We have too much antidiuretic hormone. We're not diuresing. Diabetes insipidus, let's jump down to the bottom there. Diabetes insipidus, we have a high serum sodium, high serum osmolality, and a low urine osmolality. The patient is diuresing. Now let's compare those two situations to dehydration. So if the patient's dehydrated for some other cause, we can differentiate it from diabetes insipidus by looking at the urine osmolality. In dehydration, urine osmolality will also be high. And we can differentiate it from SIADH because serum sodium, serum osmolality will be different. Remember again that when we're talking about ADH, we're talking about 
its effect on water in the body. And the effect of water in the body is that it's going to have effects on the brain cells, and that's going to be the ultimate problem with having too much or too little water. Is it dehydrates or overhydrates our brain cells, causing problems with our brain? Thank you for joining me for Passing Pathophysiology Antidiuretic Hormone. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time. Bye.